I think I'm in my flop era. You are not. I was thinking about my flop era, though, and I was like, that guy that I was just talking about, I was like, major flop. And I'm like, my flop era, I can think back. You know, it was when I was in high school. It was when I was in college. I was flopping. Yeah, I flopped hard when I was in grad school. I was flopping. Oh, yeah. We all went through it. But you know what? That's the time to flop. Like, that's when life doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, flop in college, flop in high school. You know when I think I may have been like really peaking? Yeah. Right before COVID hit. That was a good time. No, I think I'm peaking higher now. I know I'm peaking higher now. But before COVID was a good time. Okay, well, drag me up on that peak. I w- come with me. <laughs> I want to bring you. Let's go. Yeah, I didn't peak yet. Oh, hell no. No. Nope. I'm not peaking for a long time. I can tell you that. I just keep going up. <laughs> okay. It's only up from here. But I will say, <laughs> if you feel that you're flopping now in 2023 and you're not in college, it's like, now's the time to work on yourself. Yeah, set them goals. Exactly. Like, we cannot be out here flopping at age 25 mm-hmm. and up. You know, <laughs> if you feel that you're flopping, that's okay. We've all gone through it. Mm-hmm. But it's time to exit the flop era and enter the slay era. And the only way you can do that is to become more mature, be a better person. Slay. Listen to this podcast. Mm -hmm. Set goals. Set goals. And what do you need to do next week, tomorrow, today to achieve them? Mm -hmm. Little goals. Yeah. That lead to one big overall growth in yourself. Exactly. That's so true. I did that after New Year's. I set three goals that I'm going to run more because I'm doing my half marathon. That I'm going to read a chapter every night. That's so That one's been a little eh. Dry January was really the third goal, which has been doing great. Like, haven't haven't done that. There you go. Um, I think those were my three goals, but yeah. That's amazing. Sticking to them. And then I'll set new goals February 1st, maybe. I'm doing monthly goals. I saw this thing on TikTok where... It was like, if you have a goal for like your June self, think about how your January self is going to get you to the June self. Yes. So you set those goals to get you to that big goal at the end. Yeah. And I've been really trying to like do that. I love that idea of like, you can't really go from where you are today to like, I want to be a millionaire because it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, well, how are you going to get $10,000, $100,000, $500? And it's like work towards that because it's more achievable. But I like the idea of like, if you set a goal and you're like, I want to achieve this in six months. What do you need to do in four months to get there? Mm -hmm. What do you need to do in two months to get there? And like work backwards and be like, to get to that place in two months, I need to do this in the next three weeks. Mm -hmm. And then what do you need to do in the next week? What do you need to do tomorrow? And what do you need to do right now to get there in six months? Yeah. And I feel like working backwards like that is really helpful and making a timeline because it helps you hold yourself more accountable Mm -hmm. and it makes it seem more achievable rather than just like, I want to get there, but how? Create actual steps with a timeline. Yeah. And that's why the half marathon thing like I have to run 13.1 on March 26th right now my long run is five miles I yeah. still have eight miles to get there right that's the math yeah mm-hmm. I still have to do eight more yes. miles to get to the 13.1 but right now I'm at the five and next week I'll be at six there you go so it's those little things yeah. that go like a long way you know totally I, don't know. I so also am like kind of like I was I always played sports like I'm an athlete so yeah, like that part of it was easier for me to conceptualize the yeah. mental or like emotional growth in myself yeah by trying to work on the these other little things you know but I could equate it to like running too oh my god that's such a good analogy yeah and I know there's a lot of athletes out there that struggle with mental health and it's not talked about a lot and um you know I think like a lot of the things with the player Damar Hamlin that like all of that stuff like really I think had a lot of it showed a lot of emotional aspects of NFL players that aren't always talked about yeah and I think a lot of athletes go through a lot of mental health things but they feel like they look weaker or something like that because of it where it's it's like, no, you could resonate with these things mm-hmm. and open those things. And I think it's important to hear. So, yeah, not saying that I'm a prof- professional athlete. Hell, <laughs> I couldn't even do intramural basketball without bringing my inhaler. Shit. But you I'm know. sure there's a pro athlete with exercise induced asthma. Yeah. We have one sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> that was so sweet. No, I love that. And I love that just in general, mental health is talked about so much mm-hmm. more now. Yeah. And there's so many resources. It's so important. Yeah. I feel it's like we so never wonderful. heard about it when we were younger. Yeah. Like, what a time to be alive, honestly. Yeah. It's nice. It's definitely gotten a lot better. Yeah. My professional sport in mind, running my damn mouth. I can't fucking stop it. Well, you're in the right place. Damn it. You found your team. Yeah. Go team. <laughs> 
Team SDI. I Team, <laughs> Team SDI. <laughs> you guys, I've said it before. I'll say it again. The acronym for our podcast is STI. And this is a this is a good PSA, actually. Go to the doctor. Get tested. Yeah. It's only going to help you. Every 90 days. 90? Uh, yeah. Even oh, more than shit. that, you should go. I thought it was... Well, I guess it depends on if you have new partners. I go every 90 days regardless. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Kind of inspiring. Yeah. Good. It's always, like, so scary. And then I, like, panic attack until the mm-hmm. test results come in. I'm like, yeah. okay, we're good. But like, everyone should know that. And there's nothing bad about having mm-hmm. an STI as long no. as you're taking care of yourself. Yeah, I remember too. I was even going for it during like COVID when it was like the world was locked down. Like I was seeing no one wow. at all. And then, but I'd be going every three months and I'm like, I would get like worked up and then I'm like, Jimmy, like you haven't even gone out to eat. <laughs> like you haven't left the home. Like I, know. I don't think you have anything to be worried about, but I would get worried. I don't know. You know, it's always in the back I know. Of my... It's always like, I just get so paranoid. But then at the same time, it's like, it's not even the worst thing in the world. No, but like, you always want to protect get... yourself and yeah, protect exactly. others. But I try, I want to like not scare people. Like I wish it was like more common. I just like feel bad for people that have STIs and then they have to live with it. And everyone's like, ew, that's gross. And it's like, mm-hmm. don't make people feel bad. It could happen to anyone. Literally. Yeah. Like, and it sucks. Like, I, I hate hearing stories about people that are like, oh, my partner cheated on me and now I have an incurable STI or something. And mm-hmm. I'm like, that is actually my worst nightmare. Yeah, that is so sad. That's so messed up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. We've been going on a lot of tangents. Okay. 